There are people who claim to be Christians, but they are full of darkness. There is more to ministry than spreading the gospel and blessing people in accordance to the Holy Scriptures. In today's episode, we speak to an ordained man of God who sheds more light on this and elaborates more about his life journey and current projects. My name is Apostle Variety Frika, uh, but my ID names are Variety Frika, M. Karyuki. I'm a pastor and um, a minister of the gospel, a pastor with a church called Christ in Action Ministries. Uh, we are based in Nairobi, Kasarani. That's where we, our church is. Um, about me, where I was born, I've, I've, I've been born all over Kenya. I was, <laughs> I was born in, in uh, Kandara. Then we moved to a place in Moranga called Gaturi. Uh, then later we moved to Juja, where I, uh, I did my primary school. Then later I moved to Mombasa, Ukunda. Uh, so that is my life. It has been a life of all over, being all over when I was growing up. Uh, of course, because of many challenges, family issues, uh, sometimes along, uh, I think when I was about three years, um, there was a separation that happened between my parents. So it, it, is, it is the reason why we had to move from one location to another, maybe trying to find a better place or a green pasture. Then um, after finishing school in Juja, I went to Mombasa. Um, I stayed in Ukunda. That's also a place I start, where I started ministry. Then I came back to Juja in the year 2000 and, uh, 2004. I joined a church called Bible Baptist. Uh, where now I got into real ministry. I started as a pianist. I was playing piano. Then after playing piano, I graduated to be a youth leader, then to a youth pastor. In 2007, after there was post-election uh, post violence, eh? yeah. so uh, January 20, uh, 2008, I moved back to Mombasa, Ukunda. Now that is when I started the church. We are working with another pastor, and uh, I, I knew very well that this is what I wanted to follow. Life is very funny because sometimes we, we grow in some shake-up backgrounds where there is no clarity about life, where you don't know what exactly will come out of this life. You, you are raised by a single mother, a lot of struggles, no food, no clothes. You know, uh, when I did my class 8, there was no even money to take me to high school. So you are in a situation where you don't understand exactly what will come out of your life. But I thank God because in this confusion, I chose to run to church. I remember when I was in student in primary, I had started doing drugs. I had already started taking a lot of alcohol. I would go to school drunk because of the pressure and uh, uh, that was coming from home. Uh, but uh, uh, around class eight, I, I, one day I was very drunk. Uh, uh, it was in the month of, um, should be March, I was very drunk. And I went to school and we were having an exam. And the teacher came and said the exam is going to start at 8, uh, 8 a.m. to I think it was about 10.45. Then I was like, teacher, I can help you to solve this problem. This is a simple mathematics, I can help you. And then everybody was laughing in the class and they were, laugh well, they were saying, Nimulevi, <laughs> Nimulevi. <laughs> That exam turned to be our edX. There are those exams we were doing those days. They were called edX exam. Zakukupea edX number ya, ya KCPE. I sat for the exam. After even the teacher realized I was drunk. And it was a mathematics exam. And I got, I think, 96%. Oh, God. That is when I decided I will not drink again. I was like, if I would score this and I was drunk, I think if I stop drinking, I'll become a better person in the society. So I decided, uh, after we closed school, I decided I'm not going to drink again. But now, what will I do? Even I'm drinking and um, um, I'm not in school, what am I going to do in this holiday? So I met a pastor then uh, doing a crusade and uh, I joined him. He was setting up some equipment. I joined him. The man of God was very happy that he had gotten a young man. And he told me, why don't you join the church? I teach you how to play piano and how to setting uh, to be setting this equipment. And I was like, ah, it's a good idea. 
So that's how I, I transitioned from uh, secular life of uh, uh, drinking. And actually, uh, if it never changed, I think I would be one of the worst people in this world. One thing about um, young people, and that's where we go wrong, is we go wrong, is because we we are not able to discern our path as early as possible. I come from a family of seven, seven siblings. We are, we are seven of us. So now this growing up and all these changes of location, moving up and down, schools and everything, really formed who I am today. Because I think I am the person I am today because of how I was inspired by my growth. We grew in a place where there was no food. Uh, I grew in a place where there was no school fees. I grew in a place where there was no shelter. There was a time my mom was so frustrated. You know, my father had left us, six of us then. He had left six of us with my mom. We are in a place, you need to do, you need to research Gaturi. Gaturi is known in Kenya. Those people who know about Gaturi is a, is a, is a, uh, Gaturi too. <laughs> so my mom was very frustrated. There is no food. We have a small land. Even if you farm, there is no enough food to take us through the seasons. Eh? So sometimes I remember my mom decided to go looking for my dad. My dad was in Lamu. So my mom left. We stayed for like two months alone. Uh, my elder brother was, I think, uh, then he was about, uh, if he was not... 17 or 15, I think 15, because I think I was still very, very young. I was still in lower primary. My mom left for three months. Uh, he had gone to look for my dad, and then my dad, uh, being my dad, did not give mom transport back home. So, what is Lamu is not here. Lamu is about 700 kilometers from Nairobi. So, mom cannot walk. So, she stayed for another, I think, few months to, to work out the transport back home. So now we are alone for three months. You have to find your way. You have to know how to eat. We are not going to school again, actually. We stayed out of school for two years. So you have to, to, to figure out, the three boys, we, have to, we had to figure out what are we going to eat. My brother even had sometimes decided to go steal. He would go to some people's farm and steal some arrowroot, steal some you know, maize. For us, because of these uh, happenings, uh, when I joined church, something started being formed in me and I started developing uh, would I call it sympathy and empathy so I started growing uh, somebody else in me someone who now started viewing life from a different angle I started realizing that anything that happens to our lives especially good things is not a must is a is a privilege that God has given us I started developing interest on how people live so not 2013, 2010. I started developing this desire to know how other people live, how other children grow, how other families are doing. It became an interest. And I will really focus to the poor people, these less fortunate people, the vulnerable children. And by the grace of God, 2010, I joined an NGO and I was a field officer. So I was going around children homes, in the streets, in the, I would go in the villages where people are, uh, they are infected by jiggers to just, you know, I am the field officer to, to see, to assess. One of the greatest way God uses us is by uh, using us to reach other people. God creates, created in, uh, in us different gifts, created in us different abilities that were not to, to help us. Like now, I, I, I am a pastor and uh, I preach. I teach the word of God, I pray for people. I do all these things that other pastors do. But the people who sit down to preach to them, I, I come and even pastors, we agree. Many times we come with a sermon thinking about them. It's not about us. We come carrying a sermon thinking about the people we are going to preach to. We we'll come with a sermon about uh, maybe how God will lift you from where you are to another position. Even if you want to be lifted, but imagine when you're planning this and you are preparing for this sermon, it, you are not in mind of it. Yeah. You are thinking about them. You will see pastors in the church saying, anybody who needs prayers, come. I pray for you. If you are jobless, if you need money for school fees, they are not considering themselves. Because the gift in you is not for you, it's for the other person. We have the Apostle Valid Africa Foundation that concentrates only on food. I decided that because I grew up without food, that's why I'm doing food and school fees. Because... Um, 
I grew without food and school fees. I'm trying to do what to other people that what I could not get. I know I may not touch many, but even if it is 10 or 20, that is what God uh, had enabled me to do. So I started uh, uh, I started donating food now. So this one now I gather food from people. You know, unga. It's nothing stuck in chele. Takanga unga. So I gather unga as much as possible. I gather unga, 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 unga. Then I go donate. I'll, I do this every month. Last month I gave about 180 families unga. We give them unga and then we give them like 100 or 200 shillings for for mboga. When they were mboga, I'm asking them to go to China, go to Trungi, na Ugari. This was birthed by the knowledge of this life, you need to realize your purpose. We have intelligence, by the way, of the people that are today in need. As, except those people who call you random, uh, we know the right people. But to avoid having a problem with the uh, people to help or to give food or to support, I decided I would target a group. I cannot help everybody again. I cannot be a blessing to everybody. I must have a group. Uh, that's why you hear people saying, Unaeza kuwa mzuri, lakiniwezi kuwa mzuri kwa kila mtu. So I decided my target group to make my work easier will be the elderly. I'll feed the elderly. This came up uh, when I went to visit my grandma who is still alive in Moranga Kandara. I went to visit my grandma and they were seated there with other elderly women. And then my, my grandma, I'm like, Nakamuliza, have you given these people lunch? And he's like, oh, wokokotrekedo. You know the way they say in Kipu, wokokotrekedo. Then I'm like, how? It's like me, I don't have nothing to give them. Then when they left, we started having a conversation with her. And she's telling me, you see that woman walks for five, about two kilometers to come and eat here. People have forgotten their grandmas and their parents. People have moved to Nairobi and uh, girls and boys have taken over our lives. I would buy a TV for, uh, for my girlfriend worth 50,000 and my mom would be struggling to eat in the village. Uh, it's just a generation and you know you cannot, dispensations change and that is the real dispensation we are in. We have nothing to do about it. So people have forsaken, majority of the people we have forgotten about the people in the village. In the department of school fees, I really help people who come like Help me. Uh, the easier way in life, by the way, is by introduction. There is a there is a there is a topic I always talk about introduction. Uh, the easier way to life is about introduction. I, so I I help people who are introduced by other people because there is no way you can tell me we help someone and you know me, and you are you 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 are not sure about the case. You introduce a case that you have seen that is needy. You bring it to me or to us and then we are like we consider the case and then we support how do i get the the food how do i get how do i uh initially i was doing alone uh, but um but um, i realized that demand is going up demand is going up demand is going up then i realized i can no longer handle it because for example, like I told you last month, on 16th, I gave about 150 to 180. I didn't even count. But when I left Nairobi going to take that food to Moranga, I had asked for 40 families. On my arrival, there were already more than 50. After they saw my car, then they knew Mudosi Amekuja. They came like a flood. Within no time, even the food that was in the car was not enough. So I had to send for more. So I realized this growing and somebody was telling me, if you go back to that place again, you'll find 500 people. Uh, when I realized the numbers are growing, I started looking for partners. So uh, my friends, my friends, they are the people who partner with me. Unakuta, I tell people I'm having this project on this particular date. So they, they, they join hands, they buy unga for you. If people have clothes, they give you. So and then I'll donate what I intended to. Then that's how I've been doing it. There are so many people in need outside, outside there. There are people suffering outside there. Lacking, forget about the other thing, food. There are people sleeping hungry outside there. There are people willing to help. Actually, this is the funny thing. They are, Kenyans are so loving, Kenyans are so generous. They are willing to help, but they don't know where to help. They have no idea. 
they are busy working in Nairobi, so they don't know what is happening out there. So I, I decided that I want now to make people know what is happening out there. So anybody that is willing to help, will help. So the response from the beneficiaries is amazing. They are like, I want to set up three businesses. The purpose of these three businesses is not to buy, to enrich me and my children. The purpose of these businesses, every profit will be for donations. Of course, even the business will be donation because I'll take poor people that I'll need to employ them there. Then the profit from there will save it and then use their money to help other people. How does, how, people will ask you, what do you benefit from that? I benefit by fulfilling the purpose of God. I have friends, you know, I, I do what I call Apostolic Africa ministry. Now that is now the church aspect. So actually that is what feeds the Apostle Africa, Apostolic Africa Foundation. The ministry feeds the foundation. So I have this program I do on Facebook every day, Apostolic Africa ministry every day at uh, 11 p.m. or 11.30. I share the word of God there. Now, that time has, has turned to be more favorable to people outside Kenya who are Kenyans. So I have a number of few people that uh, have been a blessing to me and even to that ministry. I have one lady who is in, in the United States. Uh, this lady, will, uh, sometimes she would carry the burden like it is harsh. She's called Monica, Monica Moni. She's in uh, USA. Uh, North Carolina and I have another group of people also in USA I have people like uh, somebody called Monica, uh, Monica Mwangi then we have Ketapolos we have somebody called Gracious Mombi we have somebody like Angie and for your information the most generous people in this life are women I have a vision along the way we are going to build a center this center is not where we keep people this center will be keeping food we want to have a storage where we'll be keeping food Ati, ati tukisikia tarifa kuna mtu wakona njaa komeru. Tunasema atutumiwe direction. Tunatuma kampuni za kudeliver, zideliver. To make sure that hakuna, my, my vision is that in the next five years, hakuna mtu atalala njaa nikiwa najua. Hakuna mtu kwao kutalala wanjaa nikiwa najua. Nikisikia mkona njaa ya siku moja, nitahakikisha umekula mwezi. After one month, God will come. Mungu hakaangi sana, apana. You see, even the people we are giving food, some of them, I remember one person I, I assisted in, I think in 2018, I gave them money for food. In 2020, wakati wa corona, that person gave me 50,000. So it's not a, it's not a, our want to idea, see maskini. I don't say we are helping the poor. I say we are helping the needy. It's a need. It's a need of that particular moment. So if you're watching me, you're a young person there. Uh, uh, Pursue your purpose and stop running after money, fame. Even if there are other young people that are famous, uh, we are we were created for different. Everybody has their path. Everybody have their their way. And um, uh, a godly mandate, godly purpose is different. There are people who become celebrities in 19 years, others at 10 years, others will be celebrity at 60 years. Wherever you become a celebrity or you have become known, if you want to become one, uh, you just wait for the for the timing of God. And for those people who are watching me and you are there, you have something you can give to another person and you are not doing it. I want to tell you that you are doing the wrong thing. This life is about touching a life. If you have clothes, why do you have 10 pairs of shoes? Give one or two. Why do you have pair, 20 pairs of dresses? Why are you going with them? Share. Why do you have three sets of TV in your house? Why do you have 15 cars in your compound? My friend, become a blessing. That is why you are created. Be a blessing for God to bless you even more and expand your territory. So thank you so much. I appreciate. Until next time, God bless you.